Good morning and welcome everybody this morning. Oh, oh, if you're here last week, the video kind of went sideways on us. We didn't intend that, but it was kind of funny. And then this week, actually Ken found out that in our vMix software, there's a little menu and a button that you can click that can rotate the video. So if I'm ever upside down, you know, it's Ken playing a practical joke on me, right? But no, <laughs> it was great to uh, be down in California, in San Diego with our family. That They all say hello. Even Deb this morning as I was walking out the door, she said, I wish I could be there with you and just to thank everyone. Thank everyone for their thoughts, for their prayers. She feels them. She's doing great. Um, we had a great time being down there seeing Soren and Jackson, and many have asked that now they are over 10 pounds, 10 pounds, I think around 5 ounces or so, so they have actually doubled their weight uh, since they were born, so that's a great sign, and uh, we had a lot of fun just being there with them, and it still took, we were able to pick up Catherine in San Francisco and take her down with us because we were all self-isolating, and it took seven adults to take care of two little kids, two infants. But we had a great time, and uh, it's tiring, though. Any of you that know having, having little infants around, and Kayla is still uh, pumping and, and doing all that, so then she needs two people there with her all the time, basically, to help. And so uh, her, our, her in-laws, so Mark and Sandy, they are great. They are doing a lion's share of helping, getting up at nights, uh, with them. Deb and I were able to stay a couple nights so they could get a good night's sleep. But uh, pray a little prayer for Mark and Sandy also, and for Kayla and Ryan with these babies, and pray that they will start sleeping through the night. That would be the best thing. But they'll be there until they drive back to Minnesota here at the beginning of August. And so we thank them. But uh, enough about that. Thank you for being with us today. Just a few announcements that we have. Next Sunday, is the first Sunday of the month, so we will be celebrating Holy Communion again. And so this week, if you could gather items so for the elements for Holy Communion, that uh, we'll celebrate that together next week. Also, um, we have lots of our ministries are continuing, and we have a new ministry that will be going on. And I'd invite Lynn Charlotte to come up and tell us a little bit about that and see if you'd like to participate in this new ministry that the Social Ministry Committee is putting on. Good morning. Many of you know that my parents live in a senior assisted living facility in Bothell, and I used to visit them weekly at least. Uh, since the coronavirus, began and our lockdown started in mid-March, uh, mid I have not seen them. And they are living entirely in isolation. They can't see their neighbors. They don't go out and about in the community. This situation is very similar for many of our seniors here at Ebenezer. And in, in addition to the isolation that many of our seniors are feeling, um, this can be co compounded by issues of cognitive impairment or memory loss that only makes the isolation worse and more confusing. The Social Ministry Committee put our heads together and would like to invite our congregation members to sign up to uh, participate in a letter writing campaign for our seniors who are isolated and at home and unable to visit with even their own families. So if you would like to bring a little good cheer to some of our senior members, our Ebenezer family, please contact me. My information is in the phone book and in the directory, church directory, and you can either call me or uh, email to let me know that you would like to participate in being a letter writing buddy for one of our seniors. And if, then if you could just write a note to them weekly, I think it would bring a lot of great cheer to some of our seniors who are so isolated at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Yes, and what a great ministry. Thank you for leading that and heading that up. And that's our theme today. Actually, our gospel lesson that we will be hearing is Jesus asking us to show Christian compassion 
to one another. And so we'll talk more about that as our service goes on. But, it, but uh, thank you for that new ministry. Many of our other ministries are continuing along this last week. For example, our community supper uh, that they had, they boxed up 397 meals that were served out into our community. And so thank you for all who took part in that. There are some youth things that you can read about that uh, if you receive the email. Uh, they also uh, thank you for uh, everyone who is continuing with our ministries here at Ebenezer, that even though we are not physically able to be together, that we are together in spirit and carrying on the good news of Jesus Christ in our community. So as we begin our service, let's just take a moment to pause and to center ourselves as we ask God to be with us. And so we do gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning, Here I Am, Lord, and we sing verses 1 and 2. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? snow and rain I have borne my people's pain I have wept for love of them they turn away I will break their hearts of stone give them hearts for love alone I will speak my word to them shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy. Reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and who serve one another as we hold your people in our hearts through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter. St. Paul writes, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer 
Present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to form to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin... You were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But... The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends our first reading. We sing together our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The gospel of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Well, good morning, kids. Glad you're here worshiping with us this morning. And I brought a couple of musical instruments, and this one actually is a clarinet. Deb, my wife, she used to play this clarinet when she was in, I think, elementary school and in middle school. And so I wanted to bring it here just to see if I could play it. You know, Iris was helping me, so... So here we go. So Iris, I nothing's working. What what's what, um, wrong? Well, I think you need to take the cap off. Oh, I need the cap. 
So yeah. You don't, you don't, it's got a hole in it for me to blow in. Is, isn't that how it works? Well, have you got a read on? No, no. Put, okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I did that. I put um, a read on it. I know you helped me. So let's just, ooh, is this thing supposed to turn? No, 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 no. no that, it's, it's not just so, leave it alone. Put it back. Just leave no. it alone. Just no. leave it alone. Just okay. So let's. It, it's kind of cockeyed. Um, yeah. I know can you that's turn the? Me. I'm cockeyed too. Yeah. So so uh, oh so I, I have to turn it a little bit. Yeah. There you is go. That, is that better? Yeah. All right. Is that how it goes? Yeah. And then and then the reed goes like that. The the uh, whatever okay. you call it. No. Take take look look take about that much. Put it in your mouth about that much. Um, okay, yeah, and you're gonna make an embouchure now. Okay, so, what? embouchure. Embouchure. You, yeah, no, I'm tall. I'm not short. People say I'm no. Tall. It's not an embouchure. It's an oh, embouchure. It's embouchure. Okay, so. And then you're you're in, and now you're gonna blow straight through. Blow from your toes. Blow yeah. from my toes. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's blow try. straight through your body. Doesn't work. Um, My toes don't blow. Well, that's okay. I'm very patient. Now let's try it one more time. Still try. Right, right through. Yeah. Okay. Should I stand? Well, that wouldn't hurt. Okay. From my toes. Yeah. You know. I'm not cut up. Swear it. Yeah. Do you, you have? You know what? You know do what? you have I, a kazoo? No, but but look, I brought this. I brought the recorder. Oh, the oh, torture okay, instrument. Crazy. Yeah. I know. I know the the instrument. I, I don't even. I think I got that cockeyed too. So look at this. Maybe I can do this. Let's try. Oh, I made a noise. That's potential. That's potential. I've got potential. There you go. That's your. Is that's that, your is that instrument. My instrument? Yep. That, you know what? When I was when I was in college, I took a. I took a history of jazz, and they said one thing that everybody can play is called Pat and Juba. You know what that is? You go. See, I can do it up here. Do I have, do you think I can play that? You know, what do you, what do you think? You are a star. I'm a star. All right, I'm a star. I can't play a clarinet. I can hardly play a recorder. But I can do that. See, and you know what? As I was thinking about these instruments, I better put this back on the cover of it so it doesn't get messed up. I was thinking about what Paul was saying. If you listen to our first reading this morning, St. Paul was telling us that we are to use our bodies as instruments of righteousness. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a in musical instrument, but you can be an instrument of God's love, which means that God can share his love always through us. And that's what Jesus was talking about by giving even a cup of cold water to someone to show compassion, to show love towards someone else. Then we are using our bodies as instruments of righteousness. And that's what Paul wanted us to learn. And that's also what Jesus was helping us discover in our gospel reading this morning. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that here in the sermon. But you guys, I hope it, for those who play the clarinet, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Good job if you can play musical instruments. They are great to learn and to do. But remember to use the instrument of your body to share God's love with other people. Thanks, you guys, for joining us this morning. We'll talk later. <clears throat> so, dear friends, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out upon us the spirit to think and to do what is right, that we who cannot even live without you may have the strength and the will to live our lives according to your word. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who loves us, who redeemed us,
Well, in England, in the 1940s, there was a young woman who entered Oxford University. She had little focus. She had no idea what she was going to do with her life. But soon, she came under the influence of a very colorful professor of English, a writer with a gift. His name was C.S. Lewis. Through him, she became a Christian through much of his influence. So later, she left Oxford against the advice of her family and her friends, and she began studying nursing. After five more years of rigorous training, she was certified as a nurse. She ended up working on a cancer ward in London in a hospital. Gradually, she came to realize that most of the doctors ignored the patients who were deemed terminally ill. And as a result, she watched many of these patients die virtually alone, greatly troubled. She felt that Christian compassion needed to be expressed to these patients in a very visible way. She approached the hospital administration with an idea, an idea she had for surrounding those dying of cancer with friends and loved ones during their last days, rather than isolating them away in sterile rooms with strangers gathered around. Her radical ideas were quickly rejected by the hospital administration. Undaunted, she decided to enroll in medical school to try and make a difference, even though she was already 33 years old and would not graduate until she was 39 years old. Well, she completed her studies and later, a movement soon grew around her ideas that made it possible for dying patients to live out their days in a setting of love and support. Her name was Cicely Saunders. And out of Christian compassion and a sense of calling to help in a specific way, she began a movement in England in the 1950s. It later moved here to the Americas and is now used everywhere and virtually in every town. It's called hospice. It was the way she lived out the command of Jesus to give even one of these little ones cup of cold water. To have compassion, you see, literally means to suffer with another. To have compassion for another is to identify with that person and with his or her suffering so as to be moved to do something about it. It is to love one's neighbor as oneself. No greater example of compassion can be found than that found in God's love and God's compassion for humanity. God so identified with us in our suffering and sin so as to be moved to do something. For God so loved, the famous verse goes, or we could also say, for God had compassion on the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the three verses from Matthew, that's our gospel lesson today, did you notice that there's an intertwining, an intertwining of Jesus, his followers, and God the Father. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, Jesus says. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It ends with this interesting line about compassion. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, Jesus says, none of these will lose their reward. It's virtually impossible to escape the conclusion that to show, compassion, to show compassion, even such a seemingly simple act as giving a cup of cold water to one who is hot or thirsty is intimately 
bound up with who God and Jesus are, and also who we, as Jesus' followers, are to become. There's nothing particularly difficult in understanding this, com- this concept of compassion. You know, I once heard that as Christians, we are not called to do extraordinary things. Rather, we are called to do ordinary things extraordinarily well. Compassion is simply to see and to feel another's needs so as to be moved to give of oneself to fill those needs. Compassion is simply love. Love that has taken on arms and legs in the world. After all, Christianity and compassion have gone hand in hand from the very beginning. John Chrysostom, for example, who lived in the fourth century, was one of the most powerful preachers in church history. Yet he devoted devoted more time and more energy to the poor than to preaching. He established many Christian charities. He established what we would call today hospitals and hospices for the destitute. And Bernard Clairvaux, the founder of a great monastic movement, led many people to Christ. He also established a network of hostels and hospices and hospitals that survive to this very day. And John Wycliffe, Maybe you're familiar with John Wycliffe. He was the one who translated the New Testament first into English. Well, he led a grassroots movement of lay preachers and relief workers who ministered to the poor. And General William Booth. He was a Methodist preacher when he started the Salvation Army. And we, as Lutherans, through Lutheran World Relief, Through Lutheran World Federation and Lutheran World Hunger and many others, we provide humanitarian aid all around the world, even here in the United States. In fact, when Catherine and I back, it's almost been been 18 years ago now that she and I went to Africa in the camp that we stayed, that the ones who were giving out the food and the managers of the camp were supported by Lutheran World Federation. Our reach as Lutherans is worldwide, doing great jobs. In fact, last year, and I read this just this week on their website, one in every 50 Americans receives some type of assistance through Lutheran services in America. That's something to be proud of. Christianity, you see, at its best, has always been as concerned for the body as it is for the soul. And at the center of our Christian faith is a compassion, a compassion which identifies with the suffering of others so as to be moved to do something about it. It's a compassion grounded, you see, in the compassion of God. I came across this little fable, and I thought it was pretty good. This fable begins, a man fell into a pit, and he couldn't get himself out. A subjective person came along and said, I feel you down there in that pit. An objective person came along and said, well, you know, it's logical that someone would fall there in that pit. A Pharisee came by and said, only bad people all into pits. A newspaper reporter came by and wanted the exclusive story on the man and his pit. An optimist came by and said, you know, things could be worse. The pit could be deeper. A pessimist came by and said, things will get worse. The pit is going to fill with water. Jesus, seeing the man, had compassion on him, took him by the hand, and lifted him out of the pit. It matters. It matters to us as Christians that there are people in need. 
Not just because we are nice people, but because there was a time, a time when we too were in need. We are the recipients of grace. God so loved us when we were helpless and undeserving. And so we look around. We look around for others who are helpless and perhaps even undeserving so that we can pass on the love we have received. But you might be thinking, what about when the need demands more than simply a cup of cold water or a couple of bags of groceries or a boxed meal or even a call for help? What can the church do facing unemployment, lack of affordable housing, expensive health care, and the growing number of families falling below the poverty line? And now, isolation and other issues with everyone being quarantined for so long because of this COVID virus. Some politicians faced with the difficult choices of raising taxes or lessening services, suggest that the church reclaim its benevolent ministry. The church's benevolent ministry has always been there. But the truth is that despite our best intentions, the church can never do a complete job in caring for all who are needy. And government can't and should not excuse itself from its responsibility to its citizens. Christians can exercise their compassion, for example, by holding government accountable to its mandate to provide for the common good of its people. Christian compassion comes by the ballot box as well as the bread box. How can we address the short-term and long-term needs of others? Well, there's another story, a story about a little kid, this little kid who lived in the poorer part of town, and this little kid was teased by another who said, if God loves you, if God loves you, why doesn't God take care of you? Why doesn't God tell someone to bring you shoes and a warm coat and better food? Well... This little kid, he thought for a moment, and with tears welling up in his eyes, he said, I guess God does tell somebody, but somebody forgets. Do you know someone who's there in a pit? God's plan is to care for the needy through his followers, and that caring is the fruit of Christian compassion. That's what our gospel today is calling us to live out. And it doesn't demand much. A kind word, an hour or two of your time, a comforting touch, a letter that's being written, a phone call, a shared tear. That's, after all, what compassion really is. And so may we all be wise in our caring as we live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reflection hymn today is a special piece of music. It's entitled, Shelter Me, And it's written by Father Michael Jonkus, and you may be familiar with one of his other songs that he wrote on Eagle's Wings. But at the beginning of this COVID virus and isolation, he penned this hymn. And he's given it to the church to use and to reflect upon. So thank you for Iris, Cheryl, and Delane for singing Shelter Me this morning. Shepherd and sheep, my God and I, to fresh green fields you led my steps in days gone by. You gave me rest by quiet springs and filled my soul with peace, your loving. 
people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort, comfort those who are sick, lonely, or recovering, especially Pastor Deb, Leah, Catherine, Pat, Neil, Sandy, Irma, and Sheldon. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us, give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, we continue to pray for those affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Bring peace and comfort to the families of those who have died. 
Grant healing for those diagnosed, protect and sustain medical workers, care providers, first responders, and chaplains. Guide those working to improve testing and those working toward a vaccine. Sustain those who are facing financial uncertainty due to loss of income. Help us to be wise and careful as we emerge from our stay-at-home order. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now receive a benediction. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing song this morning, Lead Me, Guide Me, we sing verses 1 and 2. Sunday after Pentecost, as we close our service, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith, faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, only that your hand is leading us, your love supporting us. So, go in peace, be healthy, be safe, be the church, and serve the Lord with compassion. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Well, thank you all for staying after service this morning. And a little too hot, and I get echoey when that happens. But Lynn, you know, since we last gathered, since I was last here, it's summer. Can you believe it? It is summertime. It's summer. Iris, can you believe it's summer? Delane, you, can you believe it's summer already? already? I know, even though, I know, outside it's still rainy and drizzly, but the calendar says summertime is here. And you know what? I was thinking back. I remember there was, I don't know, some type of survey or something that was going on about America's favorite summertime things. And the first one, it said, said, do you know what America's favorite summertime sandwich is? What do you think? PBJ. PBJ. Oh, PBJ is good. If it's strawberry jam, especially right. now with fresh strawberry. Anybody else? What do you think? Iris, what do you think? What kind of sandwich is America's favorite? Hot dog? Hot dog. Actually, yeah, hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs are America's favorite sandwich. What do you think it could be, Ken? What's your favorite America sandwich? Oh, he doesn't have his microphone. He was saying liverwurst. Liverwurst. At the very beginning <laughs> of the service. Yeah, okay. So now, how about favorite pie? Favorite pie. So what's your favorite pie? What do you think the summertime favorite pie is? Delane, what do you think? How about a cherry pie? Cherry, ooh, cherry pie is good. What, what do you think? Iris, what do you think? Mud pie. Oh, mud pies, especially for kids. Mud pies would be great. Lynn, what do you think? It's got to be strawberry for the strawberry. summer. Strawberry, I know, I know. I'm partial to strawberry rhubarb. But according to this survey, it's apple. Apple pie. Yeah, and then, you know, this one is, is kind of odd, but it says, what's America's favorite summertime automobile? What do you think? America's favorite summertime automobile. Delay, what do you think? Well, I had a Chevy Nova. A Chevy Nova. Okay. Yeah, and that was my Chevy favorite Nova. Car. Okay, Lynn, what do you think it could be? Favorite Any, summertime. Anything automobile. that's a convertible. Anything that's a convertible. <laughs> sea do. A sea do. Ooh, a sea do. Oh, what do you think? Well, Delaney, you know what? You're right. Chevrolet is the favorite uh, summertime automobile, and. And one last thing. Let's see. We've got hot dogs. We've got apple pie. We've got Chevrolet. Ah, do you remember what America's favorite pastime is? Baseball. 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 <laughs> Baseball. Iris, do you think you could help us with this? Do you think you could help us remember this? Let's see. Let's see. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. 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 Here in the good old USA. Remember that one? So I was thinking, since it's baseball season, ah, I brought something. Look at this. I got it special. You know, when you're a grandpa now, you get it get things, but I've got to wait three years because it says, <laughs> oh, only good for three years and over. I'll get them. I'll get them since I don't have my mask. So I brought some baseballs and I thought it'd be fun, you know, a few weeks ago, we were golfing in here and we were playing the sanctuary course here at Ebenezer Golf Links. And so I thought, how about if we convert this to Ebenezer Field, a ballpark this morning. I brought a bat, I brought everything else. You think that'd be fun to have a ballpark this morning? And you know, absolutely. I, I'm thinking, usually here in July, they have the home run derby. So maybe I could practice for the home run derby this morning. But before I go, I need a uniform. What do you think? What do you think? How about this uniform? I'll get it all ready. Sorry if it scratches over my microphone. Oh, it pulls it off. Here we go. It's still on. I've got to get my, get my hat on. 
And I've got to be a true ball player. Get my sunglasses on. How about we can be the Ebenezer Honey Nuts? What do you think? <laughs> the Honey Nuts? What do you think? We can be the Ebenezer Honey Nuts. Sounds good. I even, you know, since we're going to practice for the Home Run Derby, and when I see you've got your UW where you went to library school and got educated, right? You have that. That's right. I was trying to find a WSU hat, but I couldn't find one this morning just to be favored. I know. So, well, oh, Iris probably has one sitting there. I know. Oh. Well, Alan really likes Oregon. Oh, Oregon. Oh, the Oregon Ducks. Okay, okay. Well, we're not going to get into that. But I also brought a Homer hanky. What do you think? So, how about I'll try to hit a couple of balls. And what do you think? A home run. So, here can be home plate. We've got first base, second base can be kind of three quarters of the way back. Third base over here, kind of where Jeanette and Jim always sit. And what's a home run? What do we think a home run is? Uh, you oh. got to hit it into the balcony. Into the, I think the balcony is a grand slam. <laughs> I think the balcony is a grand slam. How about the back wall okay. is a home run. The balcony, see baseball players, I've never seen one hitting with it. Yeah their glasses on. So you think I can do it? Oh, and you know what? So there's another story about a kid. And he was practicing. So he'd throw the ball up. He'd swing, swing for the fences. And he missed. One strike. So he did it again. Threw it up, swung, and missed again. Third time, you know, he knew he was going to hit this one. So he throws it up in the air. He swings with all his might, misses it the third time. So know what he does? He drops the bat. He raises his arms in jubilation, and he says, what a pitcher. What a pitcher. Right? Struck him out. So I may strike out. <laughs> I told that just in case I strike out this morning because, you know, I'm a honey nut, right? So here we go. Here we go. We'll see if we can get a grand slam. Oh, ground it out. Ground it out. Not waving ground my flag for you yet. That wouldn't do it. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, pop fly. <laughs> okay. Third time's a charm. Okay. This is for Soren and Jackson so they can practice. Let's see. There we go. Woo <laughs> Grand slam. Grand slam, Grand right again. There we go. Okay, let's go. Try. You told me it was going to be tea ball. There's okay. no tea. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was trying that. I could run back and get it. It was, but see, when I put that on there, it's actually harder to hit with that. Okay. All right. You want to try I'll one? I'll give it a try. Do you want to try one? Here, where's my, where's my mask? Here we go. There we go. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, oh, just wait, just wait. I know. Homer Hanky. Homer Hanky. Oh, all right. All right. Good job. Ooh, all right. Pass first base. One more. Delaney, you want to try That's one? a double. Sure. There we go. On. Stay with us because we have something else. Stay with us. Homer Hanky. Oh, 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 all right. See, it's not as easy as you might think, right? We'll practice a little more after church. But one last thing. You know, we have fun doing all this stuff. And I was thinking, not next week, but in a couple of weeks, we also want to know what you guys are doing as you're staying at home and things that you enjoy. And so, if you'd like to create just a little video, a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, whatever it is, if you want to sing a song, if you want to, and please uh, tell us uh, who your family is, introduce us to your family so that all of our Ebenezer folks can get to know where you are, what you're doing during this COVID time, but think of something fun to do, something you enjoy, a summertime activity, and share it with us. Email me, we'll sign up just like we sign up for fellowship stuff downstairs. We'll do one a week. And so we'll start here in 
two weeks. So that would be July 12th, I think is what it is. But email me, I'll have the sign up. We'll sign people up to share videos after the service and it's going to be great because Lynn, what's your favorite church? Gee, Pastor. <laughs> How about Ebenezer? Ebenezer, all right. <laughs> Iris, think we can yeah. help us with this? We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Ebenezer. 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 Thank you all. Keep it going. Everybody sing along with us. We're glad that you worship with us today. Glad you joined us this morning. Have a great week. Be healthy. Be safe. Be the church. We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and